This is the Grade 12 CAT or Computer Applications Technology Prac Exam, Paper 1, from November 2021. And this is the final metric exam, and we're dealing with Question 2, which is the Word Processor or Word Documents question. So let's get into it. So we're dealing with the word processor question and I've opened up the document called To Marine already. Remember to insert your examination number in the header or the footer. And we want to start off with 2.1, change the font of the title of the document to small caps. So let's go open up the document. There it is. I'm going to select, there's the title. I think that's the one we must change. And that's a font property. So I'm going to come here to the font option. Or you can right click and go to font and we want to change it to small caps not all caps small caps so if i do that there we go as i said you can also just write if you double select or selected everything you could also got into the font property by going over there that would have also worked now let's look at the next question format the table of contents so that it looks like this now they say we must insert one so if i look here there isn't a table of contents when i looked ahead so i don't know how to format it because i don't know what it looks like originally so i'm actually going to insert one just to see what it looks like currently so i went to references insert one i want the word table of contents at the top so let's put that i've got table of contents let's compare the two look at it and compare it to this do we see what is missing ah that's this part here if we look here, at the top if you look here, the marine pollution that is included and it starts on page two so that's the key difference to what we've got we don't have marine pollution and we don't start on page two so we need to add this to the table of contents and it needs to look like one of those headings the what can i do so i'm going to go down to what can i do and see if i click on it and i go here to home i will see that that is a heading one which is what i suspected so I'm going to just, uh, just to make sure. So I select this marine pollution and I'm going to make it, hey, you can also be a heading one. And now that you are heading one, I need to also put you on page two, which means I can click in front here and I can insert a page break. So insert a break, page break. So there we go. Okay, let's just click on the arrow so it just pops out. I'm going to click on that arrow. So there we go. So now I can right click on this and go update the field, update everything because I've added some new stuff. And there we go. We can see marine pollution has been added and everything's on page two, 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 three, four, four. So two, 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 three, four. There we go. It looks good. So there we go. That's done. Next, 3.2, remove the automatic hyphenation from the document. Now, this is only one mark, but it's the difficult part of it is finding where to go. And I think it's under layout. Ah, there we go. There's hyphenation. I'm going to select there and say none. So the key part to that question is just knowing where to go. And that comes with experience, so remembering where it is. Now, insert a caption to the picture under the heading, what is polluting our ocean? So let's go to that. Let's go to, there, what is polluting? There is our picture. We must insert a caption. And the caption is whatever the picture's alternative text is. Ah, that's sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. So I'm going to click on the picture. I'm going to go to picture format because I need to find its alternative text first. And there's the alternative text. Let's click on it. And there we can see, ah, oh, there's a little copyright sign in everything. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to copy it. And so now when I go to references and I insert a caption, I can say, hey, this caption, I'll put a space and put in the full name of the caption. So there we go. Whatever was in the alternative text is now the caption. So there we go. They don't mention anything about removing the figure, or what the, the label should be. So we'll just do exactly what they've sold. And I think that should be good enough. Remove the hyperlink from the picture from Chris Dio. I don't know how to pronounce that. So let's let's see if we can find that. There's our caption that we had. Let's scroll down. I'm assuming this is the picture. Well, let's check. Is there a hyperlink on this picture? Ah, there is. Do you see when I move my mouse over? It says there's a link. So I'm going to right click on it and remove the link. It's that easy. So there we go. So we removed the hyperlink. That's why it's only one mark though. Restore the picture below the heading. What can I do to its original color? What can I do? What can I do? Let's scroll down, scroll down. What can I do? Ah, you see the, the picture's gray. So if we want to change it to its original color, there are actually two ways of doing it. So I'm going to come here to picture format. Now I can change the color. You'll see that the color is set to gray. Its original color would probably be 100%. So I could change it to 100% to its original state. That's one way. I'm going to undo that. The other way, there's this little button over here called reset picture. And you can reset its size or just the picture. I'm going to reset the picture, boom, and that will reset all those other settings to its original state. That's a much nicer one. There we go. Cool. We're making progress. 2.7. Find the text question 2.6 below the heading and replace it with a cross reference to this picture. Only display the page number. Okay. So let's just double check where we are. So let's go. Let's scroll down. So there's where that's where we want. We want a cross reference on that and it must go to the picture. I'm assuming it's that picture, the IOC in ESCO. 
I'm assuming that's the picture that they want us to go to. Okay, if I come over here and I'm going to insert a cross reference. So let's come here to references. There's the cross reference. Okay, so it's set to number item, but we don't want, we want a picture. So let's scroll down to figures. And ooh, our picture two isn't actually listed here. That is a bit of a problem. There are two, okay, so I'm going to stop this. There's two ways of doing this. I can either go and put a bookmark on that picture. That's one way where I can click on it and I can insert a bookmark on it. That was, and then I can search for the picture, but I'm going to make it a picture, which means it's going to be a caption. So I'm going to select, the, I don't know why they want what if that, that is a caption already. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to insert a caption on that picture. Let's go to references. Let's go insert a caption. Um, there's no option for picture. So I'm going to just go and put that on there. I don't know if this is what we're supposed to be doing. I don't know if we're supposed to remove the picture too, but we want a way to connect to this particular picture. So that's why I've put a caption on it. So now it should be in the list of pictures when I come here to this part yeah so if I select it and now do the cross reference ah uh, do you see how it's listed in my figures okay so that's what we extra step we had to do you could have also done a bookmark and then you would have just looked for the bookmark um, but I'm wary that they said you must go to a figure so let's let's just do it the caption way it doesn't look nice that we've got two captions there and what else did they say they said only display the page number okay so what does that mean so we insert reference to I don't know what that means ah oh, only page number I assume that's the option so let's click OK, insert and close so there is a reference and it'll go if I press control and click on it it'll take me to the actual picture further above okay so that's the cross reference there so that's great that's done so let's move on then we want to insert a footnote on the text up okay so where is that on the last page let's go to the last page last page oh there it is there is the there it is that's the text select the text we want to insert a footnote but there's a couple things we the page the numbering must be a b c so not your standard one two three it must restart on every page and the the text that we add is environment program i'm just copying this now because i can but you would have to type it in because you obviously don't have the paper digitally. So whenever you're doing a specific footnote, and this is what they tend to ask, they normally ask you for a footnote that is specific, that's got a symbol or a particular one. You can't just go insert footnote like you normally do. You have to come here to that little part there, and that allows you to have options, which means we want to say options, like for example, the format could be a symbol, but in our case, it's an ABC. That's the one thing. The other thing they said is that it must start restart on every page. So I don't know what that means. Let's look at the options, numbering. Let's, let's, let's look there. Restart on each page. So there we go. That's great. And then when we insert it, we've got the text. There it is. Boom. And we need to put the text, which, which we've already copied, but it was that environmental program. There we go. So there we go. There's my text that I copied from there. We set the format, restart on each page, and then the environmental program. There we go. We've got added it. Fantastic. Then insert the field below the text insert here below the text the number of words in the document in field they don't say don't count them so that means you mustn't go look it up and then just type in that number so below here you would have gone to like properties and see how many numbers but that's not what they want they want a field so we want to insert something so that's insert and there's a field so let's look at our options here like we've got some Ooh, there's the field. So let's go look for a field. We know it's the number of words. So let's go down to N, number of characters. Oh, number of words. There we go. They don't specify anything about formatting. So I'm just going to do that. And if I click on it, do you see how it goes gray? That's how I know it's a field. If you just type it in manually, then it won't just change as you add more oh, words to the document. So make sure that you do that correctly as a field. And then the last question, ooh, page numbering. I hate page numbering, but it's difficult, but we can do it. Insert page numbering in the footer. It must use that format, which I think looks like that with those little wavy lines. Ensure that it does not appear on the cover page and the table of contents page. And ensure the number one appears on the page after the table. So number one appears after the table. Ensure the page numbering continues on all pages that follow. Okay, so let's go into it. So we want to start it now. There's a couple of things that we probably have to do. So if I come here, we this is the first page. We want to start it over here on this page. So we want to come here to the footer of the third page. So I'm going to double click here because I said not the cover page and not the table contents page. And we're going to come here to the page number. We're going to insert a page number at the bottom. And let's look very carefully for the TRLD. 
ATS. I Let's see if I can see it somewhere. Do we? There, there it is. There it is. There's the one we want. That's the one we want. So we want that one. So we're going to insert that one. However, you'll notice that if we insert it there, it actually inserts it on that page as well. Even if we say a different first page, let's say different first page, does it take it away? from that first page it's still there so do you see there's a slight little issue there with trying to make it appear from the third page so this is why i'm going to undo all of this i'm going to close this and undo it i don't want to do it that way so i'm going to undo the header and footer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert a section break over here to make this a completely different section so i'm going to insert a section break not a section break and a layout i think it is layout there we go there are the breaks i'm going to insert a section break next page so yes this is a completely different section to the previous if that makes sense okay so now when i come over here I can insert this is a completely different section i'm going to insert the header and footer here but i don't want to link it to the previous so i'm going to unlink it to the previous so it's its own little thing and i'm going to say insert a page number at the bottom of the page in the footer so we're looking for that t-i-l-d-s see if you can see it do we see it there it is that's the one we want and we are going to so we've run the first bit where we've used that format and if you double check here you'll see that it does not appear on the second page or on the cover page that's great it starts where we want it to start however we want to ensure that it starts at page one so let's go here so we want to format these page numbers so i'm going to come here to format the page numbers and i want it to start at a one please so if i do that do you see how it starts at one there's still nothing there and there's still nothing there so that's great so it starts from the third page starts with a one and does it continue for all the pages there's a two there's a three there's a four there's a zero okay so that's this i don't know why that's a zero we can always reset that one do they say anything about it sure that it continues on all the pages that follow so this one is a slightly annoying one i don't know why it's starting there i think it's something to do with that so this one i'm going to format that one and see what that does that should be page five and that doesn't affect all the others if i can see correctly there we go so there we go so we've changed it we've got all the things that we needed do we tick all the blocks yes do we appear on, does it appear on those two pages it appears as a one and it appears on all of them so there we go so that's a little tricky part that's why i hate page numbering it's very tricky and complicated but we can get it right if we just follow those steps let's save it and now we can move on to question three and the excel part of the paper Links to data files and other videos can be found in the video description. For help with theory, go to our other channel called Mr. Long Computer Terms. Click that subscribe button or follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.